really efficient system, guys. Well, when you're the only city that's not completely run over by Strahd yet, then you can t there talk about efficiency. But until then, he just sticks up his middle finger. These are really well, friendly we, people. At mm -hmm. least we know it closes faster than it opens. Yeah, he just needs to let go. <laughs> so what's going on? What have I missed? Uh, I'm mildly harassing some city guards over closing the gate on us. <laughs> ah. And, That's um, pretty much it. We talked about what we can do about I got bit by a werewolf. <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, Hagrid, um, upon reading the different restorations, it sits there and sit that neither one is particularly targeted towards dealing with a curse to a person. Greater, it will deal curses from magic items. So you can certainly try. And the DC, I would say, is just higher for a lesser restoration than a greater restoration. Uh, well, I don't yet have greater restoration. Yeah, I mean, you could try lesser restoration, and the DC is a little bit higher because oh. it's it's uh, like it would be a very it's a reach for it to do. It probably won't do it every time, but you have a chance of undoing it. Do uh, do I know? Do I know if lycanthropy is a curse or uh, just, like a disease, or do I know the difference? Start off by making a medicine check. Okay. That is a 15 plus uh, 1, so 16. Uh, based off of what you've been seeing, um, you said you got a 16, right? Correct. Uh, when you said looked at uh, sort of the vampiric disease, uh, it could be just that. It's more of a disease than a curse. Uh, in this, uh, back in Accra, which is a direct uh, link to Barovia, since they're the same group of vampires. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks to be like it is a, a mutation brought on by a invading uh, molecule, substance, uh, pathogen. Um, so, so you would imagine that there's other diseases that work that way. Okay. You yeah, you don't know for sure, but you know that it's certainly possible it's that way. So then, so then, from what I understand is that, uh, at least what I understand about sanguinism is that it's a disease and not a curse. Yeah, both. Yes, that's what you know about sanguinism. And I'm, I'm a, I can basically extrapolate that's probably similar for lycanthropy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, like, like I said, you don't, you don't know for a fact, but you can buy the argument. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Um. Well, if we had to, we could take some time when we get in the city, and I can probably practice or memorize a spell. Actually, make the curse away. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at this point, with the gate being entirely up, the paladins are looking at you. It's like, hey, smart ass, gate's open. All right, uh, how much healing do you need, David? Quite well, a lot. I'm at I'm at seventeen out of fifty. Hey, remember those wolves that were attacking you guys? We just opened the gate that kept them out. Well, right. it was open before we got here, so you can leave it open for a little bit. Tucker, drop the gate. At this point, there's an interest. Like, but, but, but I just uh, drop the gate. Uh, and he just lets go. And just <laughs> as I want Superman to fly me onto the inside. <laughs> What's that? I want to use uh, AS to fly me to the other side, over the stupid wall. All right. Uh, because this was going quick, this is going to be kind of a reaction. So I'm going to have you start off by making a dexterity saving throw. No. Oh, hold on. I gotta find my freaking sheet because Google's being stupid. Yeah, just like right. Tucker and the Paladin. Um, I rolled a six plus whatever my dexterity is if Google will ever load. All right, so what was the base number? Six. 
six. Uh, you sat there, and it took you a couple seconds, but you get up, you begin to say, A.S., bring me inside the gates. And at that point, the gate, while not entirely closed, it's a matter of inches from fully closing. A.S. comes in, and due to your programming, pulls up, stops just short. I wanted to go up and over. Uh, you can, it's just, you'd have to wait six seconds. I want to go up and over. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, anybody else want to do anything or continue Mike's? I'm just going to wait on Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, at this point, Mike fly, or uh, I should say, Tony Povar and AS fly over, fly down, and let's see. Luck roll. Uh, you land right behind the uh, snarky uh, paladin. And Aish just goes right back to standing after releasing you. And uh, you're currently behind a smartass. And Hagrid looks at them and says, okay, clearly you want these uh, gates closed. Uh, can we please have entry and then you can close the gate again for us? Yes, it's just we're not going to let any more wolves in here. We, Tucker. No, you yeah. didn't let any in. Yeah, I, yes, it's just while you guys were sitting there, we opened the gates. We thought you were coming in. It took a little bit. So, Tuck, Tucker, Tucker, bring the gates up again. Really? Come on, hey, man. As, as soon as there's just, enough room for my massive frame, I am Haggard is walking into the city. All right. Uh, it takes about 30 seconds. Tucker is uh, getting a little tired. But at one point, you sit there, and it just a, a shade over five feet uh, has been lifted up. And then the Goliath just decides to bend his hips forward, slide under like it's a limbo game, and then stands up on the other side. At, at this point, Tucker goes like, can, can the rest of you guys come? I don't know how much longer I can do this. <laughs> Uh, I'll walk in and uh, you know say, uh, uh, "Hey, thanks, Tucker. Uh, Dale, you are an asshole." And I just keep walking. <laughs> are you a little tuckered out? Ha ha ha! <laughs> Tucker, I just got the movie reference from Tucker and Dale. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tucker begins to look at Tony and goes, "Like you know, you guys can help every once in a while. I don't know why you always make the intern do it." I'm not a city guard. Not my job. That's talking to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm assuming everybody has gotten in now. Uh, at this point, Blink is guarding the wagon. Uh, Irene has gone inside, and Finn. Finn sound asleep again. I think he uh, might be sick. <laughs> I think he's dead. Can we uh, possibly bring the wagon in uh, and fix it before we? At this point, you just hear Tucker comes like, "Oh, come on!" <laughs> well, he's we, just we can... wet the bullets trying to keep this thing open. It's like, "Come on, do it! <laughs> just bring it in!" <laughs> I jam a stick into the cogs. What's that supposed to do? Thank you. Ask questions. What's up? What'd you say? I didn't hear that. Make him ask questions. I'm just doing it to distract him from his pain. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. He, uh... All right, he just sits there. He looks at you, and confused, and just go, Still sweating from the, the strength that he uh, barely is able to uh, cultivate. Uh, Hagrid, but... uh, Hagrid, I think that we can probably weight on the wagon. I don't think we we don't really have any supplies in there. So if it if our broke ass wagon disappears, that's okay. We don't even know if we're going to be needing it going forward since we're no longer transporting someone. Is uh, Blink going to be guarding it then? Because uh, Blink is not with us right now. Technically, uh, at this point, from the other side of the gate, you can you hear Blink is like, yeah, yeah, I got this. Uh, wagon's not going anywhere. We lost the horses, so. Um, We'll, we'll man the fort here. Uh, I'll only poke Finn with daggers a little bit to wake him up. Uh, but yeah, 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 we, we got this. 
little halfling solidarity. All right. Uh, at this point, he goes. He just sits there. You sleepy motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, is it possible that uh, we're going to be able to rest here and have uh, Leia then all his wounds healed, or well, I can just use cure wounds now? Uh, I was uh, I was thinking about uh, asking for directions to uh, like a tavern so we could find a uh, room and board while we're here in Valakai. All right. Well, if, if he'll make it, then just wait and see what we can do about possible. Yeah. Can I, I drop the gate now? Is this... Please? Five more minutes. <laughs> Don't listen to him, Tucker. Why? Build character. Can, can, please, can I let go? At this point, the paladin that you arbitrarily named Dale just goes, Tucker, it's fine. As he just breathes a sigh of relief, he lets go. The stick that uh, Tony jammed in there immediately shatters. Doesn't hold the gate at all as the gate slams down to the ground once more. Hey, Tucker, I left something outside. Can you back up? Oh. <laughs> do, do I have to? Nah, it's fine. It's just a bunch of corpses. <laughs> what? And off I go. How do you deal with him? You don't know the half of it. It takes practice. <laughs> At this uh, time, uh, uh, Dale, uh, quote unquote, because uh, <laughs> I'm to you guys, goes like, well, despite our rocky introduction, I probably should uh, uh, introduce ourselves. We're, we're the town guard of Valakai. Um, I'm imagining that you guys will need somewhere to set up camp uh, just down the main road here. Uh, a couple of blocks, you can find a Blue Water Inn. Uh, it's probably the only place with viable lodging for a party of your size. I uh, I put out my hand to uh, quote unquote Dale, and I uh, introduce myself. Say, uh, Detective Josephus Miller, pleasure to meet you. We're gonna head to what you call it, the Blue what? The Blue Water Inn. The Blue Water Inn. We're gonna head over there, and. Uh, if we need any, if you guys need anything, you let us know. Well, make sure that you keep the pointy ear guy. It, he has these pointy to lay of him, uh, under control. We got another one of uh, his kind that came in here on a carnival wagon. Really, really likes to poke around and be nosy and shit. So, uh, if you see him, try and calm him down a little bit. That was super racist. <laughs> People don't like elves, man. Oh man, we're yeah, we're in a land controlled by a vampire. You just got bit by a werewolf. Racism is kind of the least of your worries right now. <laughs> Still hurts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I thought being a werewolf would make you less sensitive, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corey, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Lucian. I'm going to have you roll. A uh, wisdom check. Wisdom check. Okay. Yes. The three. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, well, in your mind, you clearly haven't said that getting bit by a werewolf should make you mentally tougher. <laughs> <laughs> your character has that is convinced on that. <laughs> like Jenny McCarthy and hating vaccines, you are that convinced. <laughs> so uh, the implication that no, never mind. <laughs> You think I don't believe in soapboxing? <laughs> well, <laughs> shall we uh, head to the inn, gentlemen? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. As you, yeah, as you guys begin heading west uh, on the main road here, is you start to see uh, discarded wolves' heads um, on w wooden stakes. They look to have uh, rotted a little bit. Um, Scott, I'm going to have you roll a. Uh, uh, it will be animal handling, investigation, or, uh, let's see here, what else, whatever you, no, it would be uh, perception, or animal handling, whichever one you want to do. Perception is my favorite one, so, okay. uh, 21. 
21. Uh, based off of your best, or by, by looking at the way that the, the jowls have been starting to become more emaciated, uh, you see that these are heads of both wolves and lichens alike. Due to the nature of the decay, it looks like they've been uh, just sitting out in the middle of the street for about a week now. All of them? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they all look to be uh, uh, similarly similar levels of decay. Uh, to your best guess, these were all killed within a few hours of each other. Uh, and then, furthermore, the beheadings, not very clean at all. It seems like it was just... The best way to describe it is someone took a woodcutting axe on a dead lichen and just chopped until the job was done. Uh, as you guys continue to, yeah, continue to walk, just before you get to the main square, uh, you see there's a uh, number of just commoners in the town square setting up uh, a, a few festival items. They look to be more like a, a star base. Um, you can see uh, right in the center of town, there's a big hanging disco ball looking uh, orb. Uh, that that kind of sets off the odd orange streak of light throughout the, the town going through uh, windows. Uh, and as you come across that, you turn to your left, and there is a sign for the Blue Water Inn. It's really kind of a, just a, a regular old sign. It doesn't appear to be as jacked up as the Blood on the Vine Inn. Uh, gray smoke begins to mm -hmm. issue from the chim chimney of this large two-story wooden building with a stone foundation and sagging tile roof, upon which seven, yet yeah, several ravens have perched. A painted wooden sign hanging above the main entrance depicts a blue waterfall. Uh, that seems like it's probably the place, huh, guys? <laughs> I think so. Go ahead. Can't you read? Yep. Uh, I want. What's everybody's passive perception? Seventeen. Uh, uh, Seventeen. Oh. Can, who can beat a fifteen on passive perception? I have a sixteen. Okay. I can beat it. All right. So those of you who beat it, uh, beat a fifteen on passive perception. I want you to now roll a active perception. Eighteen. Same. Come on, computer. You can do it. Um, nine. Nine? Uh, so, for Leovin and Lucian, uh, as you look at the raven, as you walk in, you notice that it's paying a lot of attention to you. Uh, Leovin, in your typical, um, let's see what happens, attitude, uh, you sit there, you begin to take a step forward, See the were raven or the raven take a step back. It follows you. Take a step forward, continuing. You just three or four times, just to figure out that it's definitely, definitely looking at you and not the area around you. Can you don't rock at it. Uh, go ahead and roll a ranged attack without proficiency. Uh, Eleven. Eleven. Uh, plus my plus dex then, right? Yes. 15. Yeah, you, you hit it. Um, dealing one damage to the raven. It uh, sits off and flutters away. Uh, and you guys head inside. Nobody watches the watchman. <laughs> that was really unnecessary. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> yeah, as you head inside, you notice damp cloaks hang from pegs. On the entrance portico, the tavern is packed with tables and chairs, with narrow paths meandering between them. A bar stretches along one wall, uh, that's the farthest away from you, under a balcony that can be reached by a wooden staircase that hugs the north wall on your right-hand side. Another balcony overhangs an entrance to the east, uh, where you're currently at. All the windows are fitted with thick shutters and crossbars. Lanterns hanging above the bar and resting on the tables bathe the room in a dull orange light, 
and cast shadows upon the walls, most of which are adorned with wolf heads that have been preserved, mounted on wooden plaques. Uh, as you turn around, you see that there are uh, the double doors from which you entered have a uh, uh, metal framework so that you can bar the doors from the inside, preventing people from getting in. Uh, is there anyone around working? There is. There's a bartender, and uh, there's about 10 to 12 uh, customers uh, here. Most are human. Uh, you see one individual uh, that appears to be elven uh, in nature. <laughs> and then you hear, it, yeah, you see a little gnome that's making his best squeaky noise. <laughs> Hey, oh, you're part of the game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tony, you recognize this thing. It's like, hey, hey, look, over here. <laughs> no. <laughs> I then would like to slink off in the quest for bar stools. All right. Uh, okay. What's everybody else doing? I'll walk up to the bartender. All right, the bartender. Hey, bartender. Uh, yeah, so this bartender uh, does not appear to be the same bartender as Blood on the Vine. He, he's very fluid in his motion, uh, still cleaning like the other bartender, but he looks up to you and he's like, Ah, new patrons. Oh, can I help you? I thought you were going to say something about copper in a pitcher. Um, Do you want me to? <laughs> no, no. Uh, we're looking for a room and board for. Uh, I look behind me and I start counting on my fingers four to six adventurers. All right. Well, I'm sure we can manage that. So uh, we've got a number of ro rooms open, but uh, you might need to share rooms. I, I'm a little short on beds right now. We got, you know, the bard here. Uh, he just sits there and like makes a hand motion as he goes to like he won't shut up. Uh, hand motion. Uh, we've got some wolf hunters, and well, I can't kick them out of their rooms. They provide me the wolf steak so I can feed everybody. But uh, wolf Is that a good idea to eat wolf steak? Is it a good idea to starve? <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, so th this this is Valakai, right? I didn't see like a sign or anything when we came in. Ah, uh, yes, Valakai, the last free, as he puts air quotes around uh, that word, uh, city in all of Barovia. It's Strahd originally conquered this area, and then you just have we built the city after he did so. The walls are really the only thing that keeps him out and us in. So you you say that you're free when really you mean that you're trapped behind these walls, but you're not under Strahd's influence? Freedom can mean a great deal of many things. All I know is I have no afflictions on me. Uh, I have something that I do need to comment on at that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bury the lead on that one. Um, what's that festival that's going on out there? You'll have to be a little bit more specific. We have a lot of festivals. I, it, it sounded, I mean, it, it looked like it was like right across the, the, the way from, from here. Like I said, you're going to have to be more specific. Uh, yeah, uh, the governor <laughs> throws these things every week or so. Mm. So it's not really celebrating anything in particular, just morale yeah. boosting? Celebrating being alive? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so do you know what you saw? And maybe then I can help you out a little bit more. From the back of the uh, team disco ball. All I remember was a star. Oh. Dark. Yes. Festival of the Blazing Sun. Uh, the governor. Uh, hold on a second. I got to look up his name real quick. Make sure I pronounce it right. Yeah, the governor, Velikovich. 
He uh, declared that in three days we're going to have the Festival of the Morning Sun. I'm trying to see if we can get back in the Morning Lord's good graces, and that'll do something about Strahd. He's done this four other times in the last three months. The Morning Lord doesn't listen the first time. What hope do we have now? I'm also guessing that if you saw that, you saw the wolf sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Including yeah. the ones that are, you know, kind, all over kind, kind of hard to miss. Yeah. yeah, that's because, you know, five days ago, we had another festival. It was called the Wolf's Head Jamboree, where everyone had their own little wolf's head. We walked around town saying, eh, sticking a middle finger up to all the wolves around here. And guess what? They attack us. Mm. <laughs> Turns out, pissing off our enemies is a great way to make enemies. I was going to say that was my kind of party until you said they showed up. <laughs> so, so I'm guessing that uh, that the townsfolk here aren't uh, super supportive of the governor? We can support the governor who's not a vampire, or we can support somebody who is a vampire. Both, Yeah, both options suck. One sucks way more. Is it the one that is, is the option that sucks way more all the festivals? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're um, getting used to life here in Balakai. <laughs> uh, so uh, I got a couple other questions for you. Um, a, uh, where where can we go um, to purchase, uh, like, is there a market square area where we can purchase, like, armors and weapons and things like that? What kind of town would we be if we couldn't do shit like that? Well, last time in this plane we were in didn't have a blacksmith, so just covering my bases. And last one had how many people in it? Three. That people were alive. Were shells. <laughs> um, and then uh, also, if, if one were to be afflicted with uh, a disease of sorts... Where would one go to receive treatment? At this point, he begins to stop the general maintenance of the bar, and he sits there and he looks at you and goes, you're going to have to be very honest with me on this one. This sarcastic back and forth, this ends now. What affliction, who, and how long ago? Me! It's personal. Tony Pobar, I'm the affliction. <laughs> Uh, roll deception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Okay, damn it, I got a three. Chromebook isn't cooperating. Plus zero, I got a three. All right. He looks at you. He looks at everyone else. He looks back at you and he just says, I know full well there are a lot of things wrong with you. That is not one of those. So are you guys done lying to me? At this point, a lot of these patrons begin to like perk up their heads at the word lying. And they're looking right at you guys. It goes, who's afflicted? With what? When did it happen? Uh, uh, I, I lower my voice. I, hang, hang on, Leovin. I lower my voice and I say, he really is an affliction. But that's not what I'm talking about. One of our number was bitten by a werewolf. Not Dude. an hour ago. Ooh. Ooh. Just... <clears throat> that... <laughs> uh, Hagrid, who has been uh, kind of standing next to the conversation the whole time, kind of leans in and just says in a quiet voice, uh, this is not going to be a problem for you. We already have it handled. It will uh, be taken. Yeah, roll persuasion. With advantage. 19. Uh, at this point, he begins to look at where he thought your head should have been. And then up. <laughs> and then up. And at least, yeah, and after a couple of seconds, he finally reaches your chin. Not looking at your eyes, looking at your chin. He sits there, sees the symbol of Demeter. 
Ah, I haven't seen that one before. All right. If you're saying it's good, I can always trust the holy man. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Why don't you let him do more of the talking? But he sits there and goes, like, if you guys need a little bit more help on this, I'm sure that the church uh, on the west side of town can help you out. On the west side of town. Thank you. Is it also possible for us to find lodging in this church since you don't seem to have much for us? Oh, no, no, no. We can make housing for you. It's just that you guys will have to have shared rooms. There's a bed for everybody. Okay. Do you have a bed big enough for that guy? <clears throat> That's a great oh, I question. Know, that's have to share. I think I think he's going to get both beds, and Tony will be on the coat hook in that room. <laughs> <laughs> that's reasonable. <laughs> I'm on board. He looks at Tony again and looks at you guys and goes like, ah, so that's how you deal with them. Surprisingly effective. <laughs> Please make sure he doesn't break anything. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> I like keeping with the bar stools apparently. <laughs> uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to have you make a tinkering check. So it's a D20 plus your intelligence modifier, Tony. Yep. Uh, I get actually double on tinkering checks. Ha <laughs> ha. So 17 plus my intelligence, which is a plus 3, so plus 6. So that's 23. All right, now make a strength check. Uh, natural 20. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, at this point, you begin to find the stool that looks like it's going to be the most appropriate for your stool taking needs. You grab each side of it and you pull, and it comes up an inch. And you look down at it, you see that it's bolted into the ground. You sit there and goes like, eh, well, I've already started. You pull again, and it's three inches out of the ground. And then you come down, you load up, you begin to square up your stance, and you pull up. And as you actually jump up into the air, flying onto your back, but you rip the bolt straight out of the ground. And you have yourself a stool in your hands. <laughs> All right, guys, to the church. <laughs> uh, the, the bartender begins to look at you and goes like, and uh, who exactly is paying for that? Uh, I slide him a silver. <laughs> he just puts his hand down, comes down and goes like, well, we'll put it on your uh, room tab. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a, what, what's, what's, what's your name, by the way, sir? I am, once I get back on the right page, uh, Erwin Market. Erwin what? Mark Martikoff. Martikoff? Mm-hmm. Uh, Marty. Yeah, so he's uh he says there's like a uh Yep. Yeah, uh yeah, and then as uh, you see Erwin begin to laugh a little bit more, all the uh humanoid based uh individuals uh, begin to stop looking, seeing as like, oh, okay, it was a misunderstanding at best. <clears throat> um, so, so Irwin, uh, we're we're not really from around these parts, as I'm sure you can tell. You don't say. <clears throat> um, I had a couple questions. Uh, we, we've we've learned some information of some some uh, maybe maybe some landmarks that you might know of around. Uh, uh, around Barovia, and maybe maybe you could help uh, point us in the right direction to find these. Fair enough. I mean, who's got more information than a bartender? What do you got? Uh, we're well. One of the places we're looking for is called Saint Markovia's Abbey. Saint Markovia's Abbey, eh? Yeah. At this point, he begins to uh, just says like, I'll, "I'll need a minute." He walks out of from behind the bar, in behind the kegs. And uh, towards the north of the room, walks into that room there, comes back out, grabs a map. He just goes like, you don't happen to have a map of your own, do you? Uh, I think, Layman, do you have the map? Uh, I thought I did. I know you had it when we talked to... Um, um, 
is Mark. Yeah, pretty sure that's me. Yeah. Right, so you are looking for what again? St. Markovia's Abbey. St. Markovia's Abbey. That sounds familiar. It could be in Krejcik. Uh, let me let me have a quick little look here as he begins to look through the map, going through all the stuff, and uh, not to break the game at all. What uh, what was the card on uh, there? The 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 lone wanderer the ally uh do you remember the name of the yeah. card i i don't i, I wasn't like, able to write down the names of the cards just um i wrote yeah great ally vistiana wanderer appears to be at saint markovius abbey near the miss okay oh um, Oh, so that would have been missed. That's the card I need to look up. Ah. Chapter 8, S19. Okay. And he sits there and he's like, Yes, yes, Krejcik. That's where, you, uh, that's where the Abbey is. And that's uh that's a Why letter S on the map. Hmm? Uh, we we were uh, that's letter S on the map, right? Yes. Okay. Um, real quick before I answer your question, uh, before I answer your question, I, how many days ride would you say that is from from here? Oh, after this <laughs> first ask, how fast are your horses? Uh, I don't know. What fast if we don't have horses? horses by here. <laughs> I would I would imagine that if you have even average pace horses, it'll take you a better part of a day if you push it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, about better part of a day. Okay, uh, we were just told that there's uh, there's someone who might be in that area who could possibly help us out uh, with something that we're working on. He raises his eyebrow at you, uh, turns his head. Uh, at this point. Uh, I'm going to ask you to make a... What's your passive perception again? 17. You notice that there's a raven tattoo right on the base of his neck that's half obscured by his collar on the right-hand side. Uh, he just looks at you and goes, all right. Okay. What else? Um, we're also looking for a, uh, a village that uh, had been swept away by a river or drowned in a river. This might be easier if I just grab the book. I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So I'm going to continue trying to be vague with this guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, while we're waiting, uh, Hagrid, Hagrid, would you like? Do you do you want to take a crack at this disease thing, or do we want to maybe see what the church has to say? See if if we can, you know, make it easy or something if someone's experienced in it. Uh, definitely would like I'm, to. I, I do have remove curse as a spell. Uh, uh -huh. cool. uh, Say, so I'm a little worried. These people are just going to cut my head off. So. Okay. All right. All right. We'll, I was, we'll try to I was handle gonna, this in house. <laughs> I was going to tell him I had an STD. <laughs> church, uh, because you know any uh, I can get from above will definitely help. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So we'll 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 try to handle this in house then first, and uh, then we'll we'll go from there. You know, you might also have some kind of a bloodborne pathogen at this point. Are you yeah. saying we need to drain out my blood? <laughs> You're oh, asking for drink blood probably isn't the best for you. A village drowned by a river? Um, something like that. Yeah. There's this old tale that we tell. It's kind of like the boogeyman tales of this mage called Baba La Saga. And in that story, there is a, a 
small village that was drowned, as you say. It's. I don't know if that has anything to help you, but it's the best off of what I know. Where Where is this uh, village rumored or storied to be? I honestly couldn't tell you. The story changes every time. Do, does the story say uh, maybe like what river it was that swallowed the village? Uh, at this point, he's just sitting there because I was like, I'm sorry, I've offered everything I know. Okay. Um, well, that's, uh, that's, that's been helpful. Um, Can you, uh, would you, would you be willing to show us to our room so we can kind of, uh, you know, set our stuff down and, and figure out where we want, where we want to go and if we want to go take in the sights at this, uh, festival? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. At this point he, like, snaps, uh, for one of his children to go, go like, show these individuals to the, uh, the shared lodging. Make sure the tall one, you know, well, make sure the tall one gets the tall things. Uh, at this point, you guys get uh, led into the back. Uh, you end up finding what appears to be a barrack-style room. Uh, the the beds itself are raised off a little bit, but they're still uh, pile yeah like hay piled mattresses. Uh, so I mean, it's it's enough to just sit there and not be on wood. So it's slightly more comfortable, but it's not not great. <laughs> Uh, but there, there is clearly at least one bed for everybody, and uh, he just sits there. It's like my, my dad told me that I needed to put a coat hook up on the wall. Do you, do you know what that's about? Uh, don't, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll make do. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> um. So then I kind of, you know, pat the kid on the head and, you know, send him off. And I want to give him a gold piece. You're good. You're oh. a tip. You do cool. so, Thank you, sir, man. As he just I turns on, begins to run. Bad, so the little kid gets more money. All right. Um. All right. So um, I close the door to the room and I I want to look around for like any. Any signs of like surveillance? Like if there's any, uh, I don't know, birds within earshot? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, like any ravens? <laughs> there, uh, with a quick, quick glance around the room, you don't even make a roll for it. No, you, you guys are fairly confident you're alone here. Okay. So, uh, what do you, what do you guys want to do, do next? Um, I don't know. I mean, I know. Uh, Hagrid, uh, um, I, don't, I don't remember if I remember you here. I don't remember when, when you said this, but I, I think I remember you saying something about wanting to uh, look into purchasing a, a new weapon. Yeah, yeah, I would. I, I know that uh, I know that Berlin, when she gets a chance, wants to buy a couple hand crossbows. So we should probably find like where the market is. But I think we have other more pressing matters that we need to attend to. So church, then market, and then back here. Well, I don't, I don't think that we want to go to the church just yet. Why not? Because I think, I think Leavin was, you know, probably not um, too far off when he's worried about. What I think these people really hate werewolves, and they might <laughs> want to just cut my head off. Well, Hagrid, didn't you say that you wanted to go get some assistance from the church to give you a little more oomph with the curing? I just figured it couldn't hurt. Well, I mean, what my what my thought is is, uh, you know, the was it? How about I? Guess. How about you go to the church without me? <laughs> um, just in case. Well, Irwin Irwin said that you know he had never seen the symbol for Demeter before, which makes me think that the church that's here isn't for Demeter. So, would you potentially 
stand to gain more insight from Demeter for from just praying? I uh, I don't understand religion personally, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, just solution, roll a religion check. Please let it be a one. It was a two. <laughs> you just sit there, goes like, yeah, religious people believe things. I just thought that it might be a nice, quiet place where there probably may not be a lot of people around that we could take care of this without too many people finding out, other than Erwin. At the church or here? At w wherever, uh, wherever oh. we can find is a nice, quiet place. Uh, yeah, the church may or may not have any influence or impact. But well, hey, yeah. uh, Tony, do you do you have any idea how much AS weighs? How much he weighs? Yeah. Uh, depends on the day. Is it Tuesday? I don't know. Kind of lost all track of time since it's barely ever daytime here. Uh, I'd probably say somewhere in the ballpark of 200 to 205 if it's a Tuesday. Because I was thinking maybe we could use AS to just kind of block the door from being opened. That's easy enough. So, what, do you, what do you what do you think about that, Hagrid? Sure. At this point, Leavin, I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Four. Your stomach rumbles. <laughs> Anyone else kind of hungry? <laughs> All right, AS, get your happy ass in front of the door. Uh, AS, um, as getting pulled out of the bag of holding, because that's the only way in which Tony Povar can lift something that was 200, 205 pounds. Uh, <laughs> comes out, goes into full stank, like stance, and you just see steam come out of its joints as it look, just looks at uh, uh, Tony. Door, guard, fight people who try to open. At this point, he just begins to turn first his body and then the hips and just walks right in front of the door. Puts the claw, the, the claw talons with its wings on the door and just holds in position. <laughs> the squeaking's <is> perfect. <laughs> uh, uh, to Tony, can can you can you clarify your orders to him a little bit more and tell him not to let the door open? Okay, AS, don't let the door open. Bite people who try to open the door till I tell you otherwise. Well, that would require him opening the door to bite them. <laughs> like I said, nobody opens the door. He bites whoever tries to open the door. You just sit there and see him not moving at all. <laughs> His door is not to open, Bird. Do you comprehend? <laughs> and that's his answer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think we're good. <laughs> You gotta program a voice in that damn thing or something. <laughs> um, <clears throat> did, did, uh, as a point of uh, question of gameplay, um, back in the day, if a spellcaster wanted to change the spells, it's a period of time that she had to spend the spell firing it. I'm sorry, I did not hear that question very well. Oh, um, I think I, I think I know the answer, though, Dad. Uh, if you want to switch out spells, it requires a short rest. Long rest. Still, it okay. requires a long rest. Yeah, it might so depend it's, on. Uh, it's your essentially class. like the the way that it works for uh, Dan's class is like at the long rest when he wakes up at the day, he spends a little bit of time praying, and that's how he prepares his spells. So, in order to prepare a different spell, he has to pray. Yes. And that's a that's a long rest action. It, it, the reason why people say it can happen on a short rest is that you spend your entire ten minute to thirty minute rest praying. Um, <laughs> where so if you spent a hit dice, you wouldn't be able to do it. But if you devote your entire rest to it, yeah, you can change out spells. Well, because I was thinking uh, I could I could use uh, I could um, crack out some rations for uh, Levin's growling stomach and. Uh, <clears throat> Probably my own. It's been a while since we ate last, and I could also uh, use a hit die and heal up just yeah, a little bit. Is uh, Levin's growling stomach uh, because soon he's going to be growling in a different way? Uh, I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, roll a medicine check. Is that it directed towards me? Yes. All right. That would be a 10. You have no idea. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, based off of um, Goliath, uh, your race's ability to just ignore uh, trauma has given you a much more hardy uh, immune system than others. You've never really seen this particular affliction, so your guess is as good as anyone, but you also are very, very aware it's a guess. <laughs> well, Lucian then, um, and, and the rest of the guys, uh, this doesn't seem to be like something we want to just wait too long on. No, I mean, if, if we can try to try to address it today, that'd be nice. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm worried that a, a long rest, which he also needs, Laven also oh, needs to right. regain hit points, um, yeah. would, would put us in a much worse situation than we're in. So based off of what we, de yeah, based off of what we talked about, decided is, you can take a short rest, and everybody else can spend your hit dice, but Dan, you would essentially spend the entire rest in order to change out your spells. Okay. Because uh, I, I think that's what uh, we ultimately decided on. Is So it'd be about 20 minutes to, to learn the spell that you want to learn, or prepare the spell that you want to prepare. Uh, so everybody else can do whatever they need to for 20 minutes, and we'll say that's what Hagrid's doing. Okay, then consider me a praying fool right now. <laughs> All right, as you begin to get down on your knees, uh, for everyone else, um, roll for the hit dice that you want to use to, to heal. Um, we're going to assume that you guys have all consumed some of your rations. Uh, but as you begin to pray, uh, this, this prayer seems a little bit different. It seems like your body has been unmoved, but your mind has been taken on a trip. As you begin to, to open up uh, your eyes, you realize that you're not in the Blue Water Inn anymore. Uh, the, the background is, appears to be wheat field as far as the eyes can see. Coming forward uh, to you is a, a uh, woman, surprisingly about your height, but does not look to be a Goliath at all. Um, clothing is full of like drapes. It looks pretty close to, to a toga with uh, straps going over both shoulders. Uh, she just looks at you and says, Agrid, I do believe we need to talk. Uh, you know this voice and this entity to be Demeter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know where to go with this. Uh, <laughs> found by logic. Mm -hmm. Well, when you were one of my chosen, you do realize this would mean we'd eventually have to talk, right? Sure. I mean, we might as well have a conversation. I've been praying to you for quite a long time now. Uh, yeah. Not just today, I mean, but in my life. Uh, yeah, so with the uh, individual that stole your holy symbol, that was a uh, Quite an outrage there. Uh, yeah. Now, she just looks at you and just goes, know that the symbol is exactly that. It's a, it's a symbol. It's a focus. If you don't have that, it doesn't mean that you don't have power. Well, I am uh, repentant in my... Apology for my actions. Uh, I was simply drawing on the lawbringer side of my devotion to you, uh, and I did. Uh, I did forget a little bit of my station. And uh, ask for your very well. Yes, the the apology is accepted. Remember why you have been brought to Barovia. Remember that there are lawbreakers all abound, but we ask you to bring in the heads 
of evil, the appendages, they'll fall off when we take the head. Is that a Hydra wow. reference? <laughs> yeah. Uh, at this point, you, yeah, your body and your uh, mentality begin to make the trip back to each other. You close your eyes. The next time that you wake up, 20 minutes have passed. Everybody is just looking at you. You sit there like, hey, is he ever going to wake up? Uh, I've been trying to teach Tony how to play poker dice, and he's just trying to eat the dice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to eat, Bill. I'm trying to determine what they're made of. <laughs> Roll an intelligence <laughs> check. With disadvantage. You suck, sir. Uh, 13 plus 3, so 16. Throughout this entire experiment, which you have gone through great lengths in order to conduct, you realize that you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just asked me, Tony. They're made out of bone. <laughs> That would explain why they're so dry. Yes, it would. You owe me a new set of bone dice. Did, did you, want, <laughs> you expected dice to be moist? Not porous. Look, he was okay with candy tasting like dirt. <laughs> he thought that was okay. <laughs> Maybe he thought bone dice taste like cake. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so uh, Hagrid, you have a chance to uh, change out your list of prepared spells. Alrighty. I have added remove curse. All right, yeah. That's, uh... and, would like, and would like to cast that on you. All right, let me see if you can do this as a ritual, by the way. And that way, not consume the spell slot. Oh, nope. Not a ritual spell. All right. So, as uh, you begin to uh, go over the spell, um, your hands begin to glow as you put them uh, on either side of the wound. Uh, that Leovin sustained. At this point, you begin to see that the wound begins to close up. Uh, instead of scar tissue normally feeling it, it's kind of like you undid time for a short period, and it's like the wound never occurred in the first place. Uh, Leovin, I'm going to ask you to make a constitution check. So it's just d20 plus your constitution modifier. 14. You can feel... Uh, as this happens, just this sort of strand, it feels like, in your body that had been going from the wound towards your heart. It was kind of imperceptible before uh, Hagrid touched you, but now you can feel it being pulled out of your body. And at first, it feels like a seizing, sharp pain. But as it goes forward, you see that the sharp pain begins to get smaller and smaller throughout your body until eventually it just feels like you have a Goliath's hands uh, over pretty much your entire abdomen. <laughs> uh, but as best as you can tell, uh, you believe that you are not uh, afflicted anymore. Um, and I'm also going to need you to roll a D100. Um, so that's the 10 and the one with the 10, 20, 30 thing? Yep. Mm -hmm. 66. 66. So right now, because you had a very middling row, yeah, roll, you get to choose one option. You can have either your lycanthropy cured, or you can have your sanguinism cured. You can also choose to have neither cured. <laughs> hmm. I assume lycanthropy is something that's not as fun as it sort of sounds like it might be. <laughs> so I'm going to go with that. All right. So you can mark off on your character sheet now that you no longer suffer from the early stages of lycanthropy. Uh, 
Yep. Hagrid, you noticed... Yeah, you you have felt that entire connection in Leavin's body. You've seen it break, and uh, yeah. You, you have removed curses in the past. You feel like you... This one is very, very similar to other uh, pathologies you've dealt with and, and believe that it's no longer going to have implications on the party. All right. No, Hagrid, the shit you do is really cool, but I don't get any of it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, it's magic. <laughs> All right, so now that now that that's taken care of, um, Hagrid, are, are are you are you hungry? Do you want do you want me to buy you you know an ale and, and some some food out out there? Um, I'm actually not too bad. Uh, I could probably eat uh, just to keep my strength up, but as far as uh, battle wounds, I, I'm not that not bad off at all. So. All right. Um, Whatever the party needs to do. I think I think what, what would be a good thing for us to do is to kind of go out there, uh, order you know a round of drinks and some food uh, for everyone. Even though uh, I I know I just uh, had some of the rations for my pack. I, I, you know, it's uh, we can still order you know like a plate of something for the table. And uh, I'd like to kind of sit around and see if we can hear any like rumors or you know pick up on any scuttlebutt from the people who are in the tavern talking. Yeah, all right. So as you guys head downstairs, uh, ooh. ooh, okay, that was two natural ones. Uh, <laughs> two so you fall down the stairs? What just happened? <laughs> no, no, you're going to wish that's what happened. Um, oh. As you come downstairs, uh, it is deathly silent. Uh, the um, doors are barred in. Um, with a, it appears to be like a uh, two two by fours about a Goliath's height um, have been slammed right in front of the doors. Uh, everyone has their hands on the hilt of their weapons. Just not a word is being said at this point. Erwin looks at you guys and just gives you a finger right in front of his mouth, trying to let you guys know. It's like shut the fuck up right now. <laughs> Uh, I turn around and put my hand over Tony's mouth. <laughs> I was literally about to do that, but I had food in my mouth. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So Every there are two hands over my mouth now. Yeah, you see uh, six or seven ravens in the rafters uh, of this bar. They are all looking intently on the door as well, so it's not just the humanoids who are doing it. So everyone's watching the front door? Is that what mm -hmm. you're saying? Yes. Okay. I try to see if there's a back door. Um, as you be continue down the stairs, you sit there and uh, see that there are, you know, windows. Hmm. Do we hear anything at the front door? Uh, you hear what appears to be um, some shouts. Uh, it, it appears to be that there's uh, some sort of disturbance. Uh, I'm going to have you roll a Perception check with disadvantage because there is a wall in between you and outside. Seven. Seven. You can definitely hear that there are multiple voices outside the doors. You don't, you can't, it's like when you hear uh, overlapping voices, you don't know which ones belong to whom, you just know that there are multiple voices. Um, I have two questions. Uh, one, where's Irina? Irina was led to a separate room uh, just next to yours. Uh, okay, I would like to check on that after I ask my second question. Okay. Is anyone looking out the windows, or are they trying to stay away from the windows? They are, uh, yeah, they're not standing in front of the windows, but off to the side, so that they can peer through and try to eliminate their profile. So they are trying to hide. Yes. Okay. Um, so leaving Leovin to cover Tony's mouth, I'd like to try to quietly walk over to the door to Irina's room. 
All right. Uh, Leavin, since you're the only hand on here, uh, <laughs> roll a dex or roll a uh, constitution saving throw. Mike, roll a melee attack. <laughs> oh, geez. 18. Okay. Uh, I rolled a 6. Add your proficiency bonus. Uh, proficiency that would make a hand. total of 10. All right. Uh, you begin to lick Leavin's hand, trying to get it uncovered. Leavin, while finding it appropriately disgusting, still is able to maintain control of the situation. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give him a tap on the head. <laughs> Roll to attack. 16. What's your armor class? 16. Oh, All right, that does one point of force or blunt, bludgeoning damage. <laughs> All right, I lost my first hit point in our entire quest. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> At this point, Laven, you know, turns around, comes up, uh, heads off to the adjoining room to the barracks, um, and just sees Irina there. Um, there is a window into her room. She appears to be looking at it. Uh, same, yeah, same style as the individuals downstairs, um, and just sits there and looks and goes, "You've been followed." Followed by what? I'll give you four guesses, but they're all the same answer. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's not four guesses. Is it Strahd? I, Dang. Werewolves, Dang. vampires, the Vistiani <laughs> guy that we punched. How were they in the city? I honestly couldn't tell you. This isn't something that the guards could handle? Uh, uh, at this point, Levin and Hagrid, you guys are downstairs where uh, uh, Lucian is upstairs. But uh, uh, to your point, Lucian, Irina is unharmed and up, yeah, and on the second floor of the Blue Water Inn. Uh, okay. Um... <clears throat> so so I I heard so me and Irina talked that it was vampires and the rest of the party doesn't know that yet. Uh yes. Okay. Um so knowing that Irina is safe and that obviously she knows to stay out of sight, uh I'm going to try to sneak back out uh to where the the rest of the guys are and uh quietly let them know that we've been followed by vampires and they're in the city. Roll stealth with advantage because there's walls between you and the vampires. All right. Um, okay, so that is a 25. All right, you are back with the party on the stairs. Um, Wait. Yeah. So so if these are just, like, vampires, why are we trying to, like, bar the doors and hide? They can't get in, right? Well, to, for them to have gotten into the city, someone had to let them in. At, at this Ooh. point, yeah, Erwin waves you over and sits here and goes, like, you're right about the whole door thing. They're also very good at making people look foolish. So throw that in. Throw that in. What was that last part? Just throw that in for a little bit of reinforcement. Protection from stupidity. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. At this point, um, you can see a new raven coming in from a hole in the roof. Comes, instead of landing on the rafters, go at, goes into one of the seats up there, uh, and then uh, begins to make a very distorted, sort of hideous, grotesque shape change over the course of the next 40 minutes. Tony, you look at this, you can sit there, oh, this is disgusting. Cool. Um, <laughs> But at the end of this 45 seconds, you begin to see a uh, bald humanoid individual once again uh, for the people with 
uh, passive perception that can be to 15, you notice a raven tattoo on the right side of your neck, just like you saw with Erwin. So you're telling me I threw a rock at a changeling. As best you can tell. Uh, he sits there and goes like, instead of, like, looks at Erwin, there's kind of a knowing glance there, looks at you guys, and he sits there and goes, they're not going to leave until they talk to you. To us? Yes, you. Well, gentlemen. So I'm waving my hand. Camping out here for the day, or? <laughs> a hand over my mouth. Should we uh, bring Irina with us, or are they not specifically after her right now? Well, I, I mean, we, we took her from Barovia to here to get her away from Strahd, so I think that we should leave her Not inside. let them know that she's here, yeah. Yeah. No. Just thinking if they already do, then she may not be melting by herself. Um, we can leave her with AS. But not out there, I don't know. Oh, uh, we could. We could leave her with a We could leave AS with her. Could we, Tony? I release my hand. Well, it's about damn time. Uh, you say in a booming voice, and then everybody just looks at you and just goes, God damn it. It's, it's <laughs> weird that they all say it in harmony at the same time. Well, I mean, they know we're here. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he's here. Well, no, I mean, they knew we were in Balakai. So they, they know we're here. Hey, so let's go punch that asshole at the gate who was complaining about having to hold it open for letting vampires in. First, first, let's see if we can get rid of the vampires. Well, we need to keep a flank, or we could just like run right away. Do Do you guys do Do you guys want to like wait by the door and I'll go out and talk to them first, and then I can give you some sort of sign if I need you. That way we can. Uh, you know, try to stay as safe as possible and and keep Irina safe. Well, is the first thing stay with Irina. I think the rest of us should go. We can put AS on guard duty. Do we have to just talk to this guy that just came into the bar, or do we need to talk to? No, that that guy was he was one of the ravens that was in the rafters of the bar. So apparently the the people with raven tattoos can shape shift. He's not with He does not appear to be with the vampires, from what I can tell at least. Uh that guy overhears you and goes like Who the fuck do you think I am? Of course I'm not with the vampires, dickweed. I know, you used to be a fucking bird. Who are you? <laughs> you're right. You're not a vampire, you're a bird fucker. <laughs> Why does anybody bird. let you talk? <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> try harder. You should right, um, and show him the slobber that now, you know. <laughs> yeah. It, it's actually really weird how viscous gnome slobber is. Uh, there's been a couple of times that Laban's trying to shake it off his hands, and it just gets longer and doesn't fall off. <laughs> All right, uh, Tony, can you leave AS with Irina and give him very specific directions not to let anyone, uh, you know, touch her? <laughs> AS, do what he said. At this point, you, you see Super him. specific. <laughs> yeah. You see him, he just takes a wing and claw and comes up. It looks like he's doing a military salute, and he just begins to walk up the stairs in a very, um, like, abrupt uh, uh, staccato fashion. You see him walking off to uh, Irina's room. You know, Tony, that thing still creeps me out. <laughs> I still think there's a person that's glad it doesn't have a voice yet. Yeah, I can imagine how fun that's going to be. All right, guys, let's uh, go uh, meet the Pied Piper. All right, uh, two of the humans. Uh, as you know, is both having raven tattoos now that you know to look for it. Uh, begin to lift off the uh, uh, planks barring the door. They open it up for you and they look like, hurry, get the fuck out so we can bar this up again. We'll open it up. 
wouldn't more sure you're not a vampire. <laughs> um, at this point, you guys head out, and we get to move on to this. Oh, do we have new tokens? What, what what's going? What are those new tokens? Yeah, you guys are in the south portion. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. These individuals right here appear to be part of the city guard. They uh, have their weapons drawn. They're on their back foot. It looks like they're trying to contain the vampires here. Um, these vampires are kind of nondescript uh, uh, troublemakers. As best vampire nighthawks. Don't, don't fucking lie to me. Yeah, they are. I know that goddamn artwork. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this individual right here, I'm going to have Tony, Leavin, and uh, Lucian make uh, perception checks. All right. 20 total. Uh, um, 11. No, 12. 12. 21. Uh, thankfully, this wasn't that hard. Uh, Despite the blood stains uh, on him and the fresh or the wounds of varying ages, you know this individual because you've met him before. This is Brom. Um, Brom is held by the coll yeah the collar by this individual here, uh, who you, uh, based off of descriptions you've had in the past, this is an individual with a a sort of. Uh, uh, Midnight black cloak on. He's got a uh, crimson doublet, uh, and along the sleeves there, they're kind of a white. He's got uh, leather boots that go halfway up the calf. The skin itself is an ashen white with jet black hair, uh, with a receding hairline on either side. The eyes, uh, deep, deep crimson. Uh, the ears pointed like he used to be an elf. Based off of all the descriptions you've heard, this individual is Strahd. Oh. Uh, did I recognize Brom? You did recognize Brom. Uh, all right, so um, I, I say from our position where we are right now, Brom, I had a feeling we'd be running into you sooner or later. He lifts up his head weakly, looks at you, and just goes, oh, This is fucking great. <laughs> As his head slinks back down, uh, Strahd walking forward with uh, uh, Brahm in tow, he sits there and goes, Oh, yes, the guests of honor in Barovia today. I was blah, hoping. Blah, blah. Could, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping we could meet in not much more luxurious circumstances. Did my invitation to the castle not come to you? Hmm. It wasn't so much the invitation, it was uh, your messenger. Ah, uh, yes, my 23rd secretary, Rahadin. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. he's kind of a dick. <laughs> well, kind of? I believe you have already met my 22nd secretary, who is now uh, relieved from his position. At this point, he raises his left hand and shows the bloodied Brahm. It was made apparent that you all made him act the fool. That is something I cannot stand for. What, is he now the 23rd secretary? Do you listen at all? With all the talking you do, your ears don't work too well. Too busy talking. Well, at least we can agree on that, Lucian. <clears throat> so, uh, you already know our names. Uh, I'm assuming that, uh, with all the pomp and circumstance, that you are Strahd. The one and only. Well, you wanted to talk to us. Here we are. Oh, well, I believe that we have some mutual interests. You want my former 22nd secretary dead for what he did to your own city. I want him dead because he is no more use to me. I see that our interest lies. In this case, I was hoping that we can parlay for a second. So, it's a pretty big jump. So you're just going to let us kill him? Is that what this is? 
<laughs> Those in my employ understand I do not accept the failure. This is just a creative way to show what happens to those who fail. It's, uh, it's, it's a bit of a jump, Strahd, to say that our interests are aligned because we have ill feelings towards someone who you are disregarding now. He tried to eat homeless people. Like I said, there are many ways in which he did not succeed. <clears throat> well, if you're here to make a public execution of it, get on with it. As you wish. At this point, he, ra yeah, he uh, takes his hand. You notice the fingers appear to have elongated. This is, is a, an aberration. Uh, his fingers, as you compare to yours, even the Goliaths, um, even though he's about five foot seven stature, his hands, while slender, are about the size of Hagrid's. As he rolls, uh, he hits on that. At that point, you just see the hand go right through the back of his ribs, uh, goes in about mid forearm. As you see the, the muscles flex in his wrist as he pulls out, you begin to see the exposed heart of Brahm. His left hand drops. Brahm's corpse falls, lifeless. And he sits there and goes, you know, at least we can get one thing accomplished together. As he just squeezes and the heart rends into shreds. I don't remember that being one of the ways to kill a vampire. You have to remember that when you are the one that offers the gift, you're also the one that can remove it. Gift, first potatoes, potatoes. You know what can they say? Potatoes are going to potate. <laughs> So, uh, was that all you wanted us for? Are you leaving now? Well, I would also like to inform you that I am looking for a new right-hand man. The individuals in Barovia have a very specific skill set, ones that you don't have. So, throughout your time here, understand that you are here because I willed it. I understand... This is a sort of job interview. You oh, guys, I thought we got here through an obnoxious bar. Mm -hmm. Don't tell what, him how we got here. What, what he's saying is that the, the portal... The, basically, we would not have been able to chew, go through the portal and arrive in Barovia if Strahd had not willed us to be in Barovia. I see one person's intelligence is exactly what the legends say. Um, I, I, my, I swell up. up a little bit. I swell up a little bit. I say legends. <laughs> <laughs> How many people do you think go head on against a building of vampires and walk out without a few longer things? I have no idea what you're talking about. We never went up against a building of vampires. Roll deception. <laughs> Uh, 15. Uh, yeah, okay. He just looks at you and goes, Please, you know the information I have at my disposal. Need for deception is fruitless at best. Guys, we got a leak. <laughs> I think it's you. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> At this um, point, coming in from the north, you see a individual who is clearly humanoid. Uh, let me pull up what he looks like. This is a more stout individual uh, with black hair uh, going into a full beard. 
there is patches of white everywhere. The sun appears to have damaged and wrinkled his skin, but he wears sort of um, a, a leather armor uh, that goes all the way down. It looks like it's part armor, part cloak. Uh, and he looks in uh, and, and just looks at uh, Strahd and goes, Oh, mother fucker. What the fuck are you doing here? At this point, Strahd turns around and goes, uh, Governor, it's good to see you. It's nice to know how much uh, your wolf's head jamboree really changed things around here. <laughs> he knows about the jamboree, guys. <laughs> what, are we in grade school again? Of course I know about the jamboree. Just because it's not within view of Castle Ravenloft. You, first off, you don't understand that I'm a magician as well. Magician? Like you do tricks? Tricks. Like at parties and stuff? Tricks. <laughs> I do illusions. Tricks are what old funny. <laughs> like at parties and stuff. <laughs> tricks are what whores do. <laughs> That's why he's here. He's the magician for the festival. I have noticed that your intelligence is beguiled by an absolute lack of understanding to win to use it. 18.7%, <laughs> motherfucker. Yes, I am aware of how much damage you caused to your home community. Uh, at this point, he begins to look around and goes, Governor, please make sure that you have your tributes to the ruler of this realm prepared. I will send Rahadin shortly to collect. He turns around to the uh, Nighthawks, as Corey so eloquently noticed, and just says, We have no business here. If we may adjourn to my castle. Adventurers, I look forward to meeting you again. Once again, when I send invitations, understand that no harm will come to you if you accept them. At this point, they all transform, shapeshift into a bat, and begin to fly off towards the north, or to the southeast, towards Castle Ravenloft. Uh, I fire an arrow at one of the bats. <laughs> okay, roll for an attack. Natural 20. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, I'm glad this happened. We're changing the way that we're doing critical hits because now we're getting it to a level where, um, you know, we're going to get enough dice where a critical hit should will do exactly what a critical hit should. So what you'll do is roll um, damage, uh, double the dice on that, and then add in your mo uh, modifier. Okay. So it's Rod said I'm the dumb one. <laughs> four plus four. So you so roll like a I, four? I rolled a four, yeah. So that's an eight now, and then what's your modifier? Four. So that does 12 points of damage hitting uh, the trailing of a uh, bat. At this point, it does enough damage where it gets out of its shape change. It goes back into a, a vampire and falls about 25 feet onto the ground doing... An additional 10 points of damage. He just sits there uh, lying um, prone. Uh, his body did essentially a giant swan or a swan dive belly flop. There was no water. There was only beaten path. Uh, hey, this, for information. Yeah, at this point, Strahd and the other three vampires have escaped. <laughs> Let's go uh, capture he, this one at hat. Yeah, the town guard now begins to uh, circle in on the currently uh, grounded vampire and just all begin sticking him with their swords. <laughs> <They're just laughs> Which will do... Prison, prison shanking murdering this guy? Yes. Okay. Four, that's a five. There's another four. That's a seven. There's a three. Yeah, so... Uh, it died, but once again, because it's a vampire, instead of just flat out dying, it begins to turn into mist. 
Yeah. And that mist is heading southeast towards Castle Ravenloft. Guys, we Again, wanted to capture us, that. I'm the dumb one. At they least we at, know how to kill vampires. They sit there and goes like, it's out of the city. It's not our problem anymore. <laughs> we could have learned something from it. Oh, we could have learned something from it. <laughs> yeah, let's talk to the vampires. They're clearly full of rational thought. That's why we have Tony Pobar, you genius. Who the fuck are you? I'm Tony Pobar, bitches. Once again, who the fuck are you? Uh, I want to head back into the uh, Blue Water Inn and talk to Irwin again uh, and find out uh, what is this weird Cult of the Raven thing they've got going on here. All right. Uh, as you guys head back in, I need to use the restroom because I've had a lot of water today. Uh, so let's take a five-minute break, and Mike, let's have our uh, weekly shit on Loot Crate ad. All right. Now I can... Uh, uh, what is that? What We have everybody. So what happened to the new logo? Huh? What happened to the new logo? Is everybody dead? I think everybody's dead. Yep. You killed them all. Way to go. Okay. Wait, who died? You did. Oh, cool. Nope. Jay killed everybody. Not showing them my hard work. Thanks, Jay. Resend it to me, because I I definitely did not change anything. I didn't know I was supposed to. It's uh, on the Drunks and Dragons drive. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did not check that at all. <laughs> Where this one came from. Yeah, but I didn't check it since I added this in. <clears throat> yeah, because this is the one from last time. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mike made a uh, second edition of it, and I did not add it. And I totally only remembered it after Mike gave me shit for it just now. Mm -hmm. I figured as much. Actually, pretty fancy. Honestly, a lot better than this one, I will say. Yeah. All right, so, uh, everybody back? Lucian's back. Back. I think I've heard everybody, I think I've heard maybe. I am echoing on somebody's. Mm -hmm. Nope, didn't happen that time. All right, Darren, if you're here, say nothing. Cool. <laughs> He's outside working on his car. What a dip. Uh, yeah, so you guys 
head back in. Uh, the individuals inside, they're in that like post-encounter sort of tension. Nobody's really begun to strike up conversation again. They're all just looking at you. And sort of just multiple expressions out there. Some sitting there's like shocked that you talked to Strahd and lived to tell about it. Others sat there and are shocked that Strahd just killed one of his own. So you guys turned into birds, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. All uh, of you? Well, when we're called the Order of the Were Raven, it would make sense that we all turn into ravens. Did you guys get bitten too? No, this is... They got bit by radioactive birds. Ra radioactive? <laughs> <laughs> It's a song. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> oh, a song. That's something I haven't heard of in a long time. We even have a bard staying with us, and he won't even sing. What kind of bard is that? The best kind. That bard. At this point, uh, the bard looks up, and he just goes, Hey, now. And he goes right back to his book. <laughs> it must be associated with TDP. <clears throat> Uh, yep. All right. So it just it goes. Um, you do understand why we are the last free city? Is well, now I don't. Yeah. yeah. It, it's not because the walls protected us. It's because we didn't bother Strahd enough in order to become a problem. We weren't okay with that. If no one was resisting Strahd, the difference between freedom and slavery is negligible. We are individuals who, some individuals call this a curse. We call this a means of resistance. Strahd must be toppled. How many are you? Twelve. Twelve strong. We, too, seek to oppose Strahd. Can we count on your aid? It depends on what you ask. If you ask for distraction, I'm sure we can handle that, but we're not strong enough, we're not mighty enough in order to face him head on. Yeah, they just turned into birds. <laughs> hey, you guys want some stuff to help with being a distraction when we need you? We would prefer if you asked us to do reconnaissance investigation things where if you can get a dragnet as large as straw's dragnet maybe there's a chance you can catch him off guard so Guys, then, did I just this here or did he just renege on his offer to play a distraction for us he did not i believe that there's a difference between reneging and telling you what is the most efficient use of the skill at the time, I'm talking in the future. Are we are we speaking with Irwin? Yes. <clears throat> so Irwin, did you did you mean what you said before, not knowing anything about the drowned village? The most the the most that I've heard is that there is an in, that two individuals were responsible for Strahd. There was his mother, the queen. And then there was his midwife. This was an individual who was named Baba Lasaga. This individual was the one that was tasked with the actual care of Strahd. She wanted to make sure that he grew up understanding the arcane arts. At a certain point, she felt she was more deserving to be Strahd's mother than the actual queen. The queen, quite understandably, took exception to this and outcasts Baba Lusaga to a number of different areas. This is where the story begins to deviate. All of, the yeah, all of them have in common is that they're by a river, and that the river, due to the arcane forces of Baba Lusaga, overflowed, yeah, overflowed the, its banks and flooded the city. 
making it a saga and her uh, a domicile the only thing left standing. It changes time in, time out. So that's about as much of the story I remember or how much I was able to look up and confirm. But other than that, sorry, we don't know that right now. But I suppose I can take a couple of my those under my command and have them search the rivers just to see what comes from it. We'd really appreciate that. Well, we really appreciate having that vampiric fuck out of here, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I get that. So, I believe some of your friends were saying that they were looking for arms and wares. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you head on towards the northern part of town, just make sure uh, you don't get all the way out of there. You don't really feel like inviting more wolves or vampires in. There's going to be a handful of individuals that can help you out. Now, they're not greatest quality ever, but they'll do. Do you know, uh, is, there a, is there anybody in town that sells magical items? You can check to see if there's anything at the church. Anything that has a holy eminence is there. But aside from that, I can't really tell you too much. We end up being reconnaissance. We're not really equipped to handle straight up fights. I'm sure you can check around, though. Well, uh, Erwin, thank you for offering to uh, look along the river for those uh, for that that town. Uh, if I, Hopefully, uh, hopefully we hear from you soon, and you don't have to try to look long for us to get word of what you found. Why don't you just come on back here in about a week? By then, my boy should have uh, looked where they needed to look. Maybe we'll have more information for you. All right, sounds good. Uh, and they're the they're the order of the Were Raven. Yes. Um, all right. Well, I guess uh, where do you guys want to go first? Do you want to go to like where the the shops are, or do you want to go to the church and see if they have any magic items? Uh, let's start with the church for Hagrid. Sure. Okay. All right. As you guys leave and continue to head west for the church, actually, I, get... Dad, Dad, are you back? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just haven't heard you in a while. <laughs> and nothing offered. The... <laughs> oh come on go to where I need to go uh, yeah as you continue to head west on the main road going towards uh, the steeple and the church being your main sense of direction here begin to pass this large stockyard it has several locked sheds along its periphery and lies adjacent to the roomy warehouse a wooden sign above the front gate reads Arasek Stockyard Parked at the south end of this stockyard is a sturdy carnival wagon with its colorful paint peeling off. Uh, faded lettering on its side spells out Rectavio's Carnival of Wonders. A heavy padlock secures the door. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, it, it appears to be very, very out of place considering even though this is more colorful than the village of Barovia, the paint has been faded so that what was once blues now look like grays. Uh, and then a good third of that paint is chipped off, revealing the exposed wood underneath. And this is, what, a carnival warehouse? It's a carnival wagon in the middle of a warehouse and stockyard. Oh. And Sounds intriguing. Should we check it out? Somebody want to pick the lock? Is it locked? Didn't you say there was a lock? You, I yeah, did there's say there was heavy padlock. Okay. Um, do I see like anybody around who might take a, take exception to me picking a lock? There's a handful of workers there, yes. Do, are they look like they work for this carnival, or are they like... They work uh, for the stockyard. All right, well... Distract them. 
All right. Um, I'd, uh, I'd like to take 20 and pick the lock. Uh, well, before you do, the wagon suddenly lurches as you walk up to it, as though something big has thrown itself against the inside wall. You oh. hear the cracking of wood, the scraping of metal, and the snarl of something inhuman. Upon closer inspection, you see that the sides of the wagon are spattered with dried blood. You also see an inscription on the wagon's doorframe that reads, I bring you from shadow to light. As you begin to stand up on the ledge of this and look through the, the crossbar iron uh, windows, you see there's a saber-toothed tiger uh, inside. Oh, dude, that's awesome. That, that, that is pretty cool, but I don't think that I want to carry that with me. Uh, it looks at you it's not really making an aggressive stance to the window Uh, at this point uh, you see uh, not you Lucian but the others uh, the half elf bard coming up behind you and just says well you guys certainly know how to make some friends I'm Rictavio at your service He's Rictavio. He's the carnival guy. I am the carnival guy. The one and only. And apparently this entire country. Yeah, it seems like a weird place to do a carnival. It doesn't seem like a very happy realm. Well, what we call that is an opportunity for business. In a stockyard? Everybody needs to park their wagon somewhere. Pretty sure there's a good town square if you wanted attention. There's, yeah, you got a chance to see what was in there, right? Yeah. How did you happen upon a saber tooth cat? Oh, yeah. Why don't you worry about what's yours to worry about? Why don't you leave Rex alone? Rex, and what Rex is the, uh, the name of the cat? That's a tiger, thank you very much. Not a mere house cat. Never said it was a house cat. He called it a saber tooth cat. <laughs> yep. So, Rick Tavia, what brings you out of your book? Well, when I get uh, information from individuals saying that there are people inspecting my carriage, I needed to make sure it wasn't individuals who uh, were going to challenge me. Channel. Like, are you? Are there other people trying to set up a carnival empire in this shithole of a realm? <laughs> I mean, there's a great number of individuals that uh, like to see happiness not ex- happiness not exist in this realm. The governor himself is throwing parade after parade after parade in order to ensure that the people are able to fight through till tomorrow. Seems like he needs some help. So how much are you getting paid to do this? You're a very uncouth individual, aren't you? Well, I'm just curious, with your wagon in a stockyard that's falling apart, with a, a expression on it that says, I'm the one who brings you from darkness into light. You don't really seem exactly like the carnival type, so this isn't very convincing. Uh, hold on a second. At this point, he concedes. He begins to take off his hat. At this point, there's a visage that just fades. His skin goes a little bit darker. Um, Is anyone here actually what they look like? <laughs> uh, maybe. At least all the time. <laughs> uh, Irina. <laughs> so far. Yep. No, they lied to us about her, too, at the beginning. It, it seems that his yeah he was wearing a hat of disguise, as best as you know, and it b- basically made him look younger. Uh, at this point, his hair begins to show a little bit more of a balding wear to it. He begins to put on glasses, and he sits there and goes... All right, so I can't fool everybody. My name is Van Richten. Van Richten. I'm a vampire hunter. Wait, you wouldn't happen to have some kind of association with the Silver Dragon, would you? No. No, I... 
don't have any association with the Order of the Silver Dragon. Those were wiped out hundreds of years ago. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, I remember, uh, Tony, do you remember, uh, what was her name? Adre, that, uh, that <clears throat> Barovian girl that we saved in the embassy. Yeah, but there are plenty of creatures in this realm that have century-long lifespan. So right, right, right. But, but she was telling us it. that she was telling us that dragons have been eradicated from Barovia. Their influence was no longer here. Yeah, well, you know, they say that about many things, and there's always an outlier or two that manages to slow away. Well, if you want to confirm, the Order of the Silver Dragon, before Strahd wiped them out, was based out of an abbey called... God, this is an impossible to pronounce name. Uh, Argino Vostholt. Argino Vostholt? Argino Vostholt. Abbey? Uh, abbey of sorts, a fortress of sorts. It was where the uh, paladins of the Silver Dragon uh, trained and were stationed. That is a useful bit of information, I will say so, sir. You're the first one who's actually given us something of benefit. Well, it seems like you guys are looking for a uh, demise of Strahd as well. Why compete against each other? Uh, so, Van Richten, how long have you been in Barovia hunting Strahd? It's been a while. I've lost count of days and years specifically, but I was but a young elf when I came here originally. So, uh, how how far have you gotten? Obviously, you've made it as far as Valakai, but like, where what's what's your progress been like? Well, Strahd's still alive. I think that's all that matters. True, but what have you learned while you were here, other than Arganis, Ar, Ar, Arganosa Vault's Abbey? <laughs> that it's harder to kill a vampire when he comes back to life a few days later? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, I think it's obvious. I'm towards the end of my days. I spent the last five years or so training up a successor. Someone that can carry on the will of freedom. You have a squire? Apprentice? Apprentice. Who might that be? Well, I'm sure when you find him, you'll know. Is his name Van Helsing? Is Van a family name? <laughs> or is that like a vampire hunter title? Van is just a name. Vaughn is actually, if I remember correctly, the normal pronunciation, and it has some kind of denotion with in, some in, relation to nobility, but whatever. In Dutch culture in, in that area of the country, Vaughn just means that somewhere in your lineage there was someone that held the status of duke or higher. There we go. So where might we find your apprentice? That one is a great question. Is his name Von Rui? Who? Okay. I don't think he was Van Rui. Yeah, I, I sent them off on a mission to do some uh, reconnaissance, see if we can find the, uh, the Sun Sword. It was mired in legend, essentially a blade made of pure lights. Oh, hey, we know where that is. You you do now. Yeah, yep. Strahd has it. Well, I can tell you that uh, my apprentice will not be coming back with the sword then, because they didn't <laughs> go to Ravenloft. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wasted time. <laughs> well, how long ago did he leave? In which direction did he go? Can you get a hold of him? <laughs> well, it went about two weeks ago, went towards... Uh, town of Krejcik, I believe. Oh, hey, we gotta head that way. Yeah, we'll talk to him later. So you're really not gonna tell us his name? <laughs> you just realized that vampires dropped in 
and that I have somebody that's looking to carry on my legacy. There's people who are looking to gain information all around. If I drop that name, do you think that'd be important for the enemy to know? I don't we know. Just just they don't already know that he's looking for the Sun Sword? Well, there, I bet they're going to let us spin our wheels, recognizing that we sent someone the wrong way for the Sun Sword. So they can sit there and they can laugh at us all you want while we're kicking ourselves from coming up with a really bad plan. So your right. your plan is to have a terrible plan? My plan here is to make sure that future generations of fighters don't get put through unnecessary challenges which may eliminate future generations of fighters. If danger comes I, to me, I've lived to old age. If I died now, I can make peace with that. I'm not sending a young person into a grave without a chance of survival. I suck at grammar, but I think one apprentice, uh, apprentice doesn't constitute fighters. I'm pretty sure that's a plural. I'm pretty sure you need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey, Levin, Levin, can you pull the map out again? Uh, yeah, here it is. Van Ricken, can you show us where this abbey is that our Argino host holds? Arganov Osthalt. Yeah, do you know where I'm going to pronounce is? that like four different ways. Arganov Osthalt is going to be... If you follow down Old Savage Road, continuing to go west, eventually you're going to find a fork in the road. One side goes towards the northwest. The other one curls back around and goes to the southeast. If you take the one going to the southeast, you'll see it. Um... Okay, just to clarify, is that Q on the map? It's, it is. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm sure you guys can head north, take a boat, head down uh, Lake Zarevich, curling down westward, follow the Lunar River. Once again, you can't miss it. We'll have to we'll have to check that out to see if we can find some some holy relics there from the uh, Order of the Platinum Dragon, Silver Dragon. Who does your reconnaissance? I thought we were talking about Platinum Dragon. There's only one Platinum Dragon, that is Bahamut. That's true, and he also has no influence here. Uh, tell me about it. Pocket Dimensions, am I right? Silver Dragon. Um, well, Van Ricken, what else can you tell us? What, what else have you learned in your time here? Well, I've learned about 40 to 50 unsuccessful ways to kill a vampire. That's not very helpful. What's yeah, your favorite one? Well, mostly, you know, stabbing him, rending him asunder. They're great stuff, but uh, they're temporary fixes at best. Does it help with anger management at all? Oh, let me tell you something. After a bad day, there's nothing like killing a vampire. Van Ricken, um, <clears throat> what do you know about a, a uh, Baba Lusaga? Ah, the uh, midwife of Strahd. Okay, so far we know the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one is uh, in a different village. Uh, oh, no, show me the map again. Guys, I don't want to... Uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that one is... So, it's actually not too far out of your way. Once you go to Arvino, Hoss, yeah, Arvino Gasthalt, just head straight south. It's going to be no path for you to follow, but if you can keep on heading there, eventually you'll go to this former town called Berez. Once you get to sort of a, a delta uh, out there, I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Have you been there? Have I been there? Yes. Yes, I have been. What do you mean by former town? Well, it got flooded, and now it's not a town anymore. Is it still flooded? That's a great question. Why don't you go check it out for yourselves? Just trying to see what we're getting ourselves into. <laughs> then cast this grind spell. <laughs> so, we're not very helpful. <laughs> You've been here for a good long while, and your experience 
How many towns along the river have been flooded? To the point where they're abandoned. Just the one, from what I can remember. Mm, okay. All right, guys, we got a direction. Screw those Ravenware fucks. Well, we should probably let them know that. No, yeah, no. Need them to go. <laughs> Uh, they at their job. Literally, the dude who knew where to go was in town the whole time. Yeah, but he was masquerading as a carnival guy. Like they're not going to ask him. Like, oh, do you know anything about a flooded village? They don't even know where to get things in their own town. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> Um, have you, uh, have, um, Van Richten, have you traveled at all to, uh, St. Uh, to, to, uh, uh, Krejcik yourself? I mean, back in my younger days, yes. How is the road there? Well, beaten path, say, uh, from what I remember, there was a hospital there, there was an abbey there, a bunch of monks uh, resided there. Once again, this is about 75 years ago. You said he's a half-elf? Well, yeah. How old are you? You just ask your age of everybody you just happened to meet? How old are you? You're not a woman. Uh, about 130. Yeah, I'm older. Well, you're old, dude. <laughs> <laughs> who, who was that directed at, Levin? Both of you now. Well, I've been on the run for a while. Wow. Wait. Elf, you do not understand your own race's longevity? <laughs> no, I just I didn't know he was older than me. Did he take special classes as a kid? <clears throat> Couldn't tell you. Don't know a lot about his past. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh well, uh thank thank you, Van Richten. Uh you've been you've been a great help. Um All right. Hey, uh, but before before we leave you, uh, could you tell us what what do you mean? What what does it mean on the side of your cart? Uh, From darkness, I bring you light. Take a wild guess. He's a vampire hunter. Is that really all you mean? Let's just put this out here. It's enough of a lead. It's the individuals who want to see evil vanquished. We'll pull at the thread. But those who don't will sit there and see it's just a funny man trying to bring a little humor to the world. Uh, can I make an insight check to see if he's hiding anything from me? Go for it. <clears throat> uh, 19. Uh, it, it appears if you, when reading his body language, it doesn't appear like he's trying to actively deceive you. Uh, a lot of what he answers based off of is to protect other individuals uh, identities um, it, it seems that like he is trying to learn about building a coalition to go against Strahd based off of everything that you've heard um, but at the same point he understands that their anonymity is the best factor of making sure they're ready for when they need to be called upon So, so Van Ricken, uh, have you have you been able to find many allies, or is it mostly you and your apprentice? We have some numbers. Not anything I'd be super impressed by. Nothing that would mount a challenge. But if there's a way that we can get uh, Strata off his game, get him into a little bit of an uncomfortable situation, I think. Uh, I think we stand a chance. Not a great one, but a chance nonetheless. How long how long how long do you think it would take you to uh, amass them if needed? You can understand why I feel like I wouldn't want to answer that in this environment. Uh, Is there some place that we can talk where we'd be 
able to speak more freely. I'll tell you what, find my successor. Meet me in a blue water inn. When we know the area is secured, I'll give you unfettered access to anything I know. <laughs> At this point, uh, you just hear a, a large or a long, lengthy fart coming from Van Richten. He goes like, oh, wolf stick. Sorry about that. <laughs> Rictavio, you are quite elderly, aren't you? <laughs> well, it's a malady that's becoming increasingly rare in Barovia. That's one I'm glad to have. <clears throat> well, uh, you'd probably best don your uh, disguise again, and we should be on our way. We will... Uh, We'll be in touch. All right, then. He puts his hat on, and you can see the exaggerated features become to mellow out a little bit. He looks uh, in elven years, about 100 years younger now, and begins to, to walk back into the main road. Well, that was actually a useful uh, conversation with somebody in this world, finally. <laughs> Come on, guys. I can't make it too easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, should we should we continue on to the to the church? Yep. I'm just saying, everybody's got something to hide here. We just go in with that mentality. Either they'll start crying and run away, or they'll actually tell us what they mean. <laughs> so, if we see anybody with a hat, we take off the hat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Might be somewhere to start. Or with uh, any conversation, you guys can talk, and I'll just sit there and use detect magic as a ritual, and you know, doodle in the dirt. <laughs> How's that any oh, different from normal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not eating it this time. Yet. <clears throat> All right, guys. So what's the plan? Heading to church. All right. You begin. You continue heading west. Uh, along the path, you encounter about ten people walking past, two of which are wearing hats. <laughs> what was that? I didn't hear what Mike said. Hmm. I was just saying, knock their hats off. You can make a lot of enemies, aren't you? <laughs> Why do you think I'm not the one knocking them off? Well, I'm not doing it. <laughs> All right, so no, yeah, if nobody's going to do that, <laughs> uh, you guys, come, yeah, come across the church. Let me get what I need. Uh, the slouching centuries-old stone church has a bulging steeple in the back, with walls lined with cracked stained glass windows depicting pious saints. A fence of wrought iron encloses a garden of gravestones next to the church. A thin mist escapes from the graves. Uh, it appears that this church was dedicated to the Morning Lord. And uh, upon the archway, you hear, you see that it's named after Saint Andrew. Uh, Saint Andrew is the deity that there that this church is for. Uh, the deity is the Morning Lord, but it was named after Saint Andrew. Oh, okay. This sounds like a job for our cleric. Ba -ba -da -ba. Hey, Hagrid, people, people seem to relate to your, your holiness. <laughs> I suppose. Hagrid the Monster Masher. <laughs> yep. uh, that, yeah, as you guys enter in, uh, let me see if there's something I'm supposed to read for you guys. Nope. Uh, right. Yeah, as you come in, it's just a, a big open room. Uh, pews aligning either side of the room in the back towards the altar. You see uh, what appears to be a, um, a priest. Along with them is a uh, young orphan. And then a older orphan, approximately about 19, 20 years old. Uh, the older orphan... Uh, has a unibrow and looks frustrated. Because of the unibrow? 
Uh, roll an insight check. <laughs> Natural one. Yes, exactly because of the unibrow. Gotcha. <laughs> the bane of his existence. I just like give him a pat on the head and say, yeah, I know what that's like. <laughs> With no further explanation. <laughs> he just looks at you, clearly doesn't see a unibrow because you're an elf and just goes and furrows just a little bit harder. <laughs> I guess uh, Haggard goes up to the priest, greets him. Ah, uh, uh, yes, cleric. Good to see one of your kind here. What can I do for you? Well, we were wondering if there was anything we could do to help you here, and in turn, anything you could do to help us in our quest. Your quest being, I'm sorry, we just met. <laughs> uh, just trying to rid the world of Strahd's oppression. Ah, yes. Well, I suppose one thing that you guys can do is just make your presence known. Know that the commoners are looking for someone to fight for them. If you're willing to take the mantle of heroes, I'm sure it would raise spirits and make my job a little bit easier. I uh, know this individual over here, he, he begins to look towards uh, Anthony Davis, the unibrowed individual, and goes, <laughs> his frustration is uh, originally founded by the fact that he knows that evil exists in our world and we are powerless to stop it individually, to show that we are at least mounting some sort of resistance, I think will go a long way in calming them down. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, at this point, Lave, and just based on overhearing that, everything makes sense now. Hello? Hey. Yeah, we still got you, Scott. Okay. Yep. Uh, at this point, you, uh, yeah, you sit there, it's like, oh. The unibrow's the second reason why he's angry. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh. So, uh, Father, Pastor, Reverend, whatever, uh, we're, 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 we're kind of hoping to find some <clears throat> uh, ma magical items that we could use uh, in, our, in our travels. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Um, well, uh, we, we don't have much, but we, I can show you what he has. He begins to go off into a, a small room. He comes out, and it's a, a small bell that comes out. And he goes, this, this is probably the one most useful for adventurers like yourself. It's a magical bell. As he begins to ring it, you hear nothing. Uh, it goes, I assure you, it isn't broken. If for some reason there is an individual with a strong evil presence around them, it will begin to ring. Until you begin to touch it with your hands, and it recognizes that there is a... a rec or it recognizes that you acknowledge its warning. Um, <clears throat> so it just starts ringing on its own, you're saying, when it detects an evil person nearby? It does, yes. Is it only uh, evil people, or is it just evil? It is um, not fully tested. I'm sure it can detect people just fine, but intent, inanimate, turned animate. I can only imagine that you'll learn that by testing. And how much how much are you asking? Pay not in gold, pay in deed. Can that work? Is is Wait. is the deed uh rallying the common folk? 
Well, the deed is rallying the common folk, yes, but we all know what this ultimately is trying to lead to. Kill Strahd, got it. We get to know. Finally, the gnome speaks something of sense. <laughs> I like how I she just met you like and knows you don't speak sense. <laughs> when was the last time you met a gnome that spoke sense? Fair enough. I, I don't remember the last gnome. time I met another gnome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was one in the the bar we were just in. Oh, that was a gnome? That was a gnome. Oh, yeah, the, the squeaking. Um, yes. Squeaky <laughs> feet. Um, are you? Do you have any uh, enchanted uh, weapons by any chance? I mean, I don't for have any per se, but if you had weapons that you brought forward, I can always bless them and see what we can do. That might be uh, that might be a good idea for uh, <clears throat> Leovin for your. Uh, Non for your your rapier since it's not enchanted at all, and Hagrid may be one of your uh, hand or axes. Or if I can get something better on my bow. Oh yeah, your bow too. I forgot about your bow. That makes sense. The bow if we can uh, make holy arrows as it shoots, that'd be great. Who is that a thing? Anything's a thing if you can make a uh, reason rationale on how to get it. <laughs> Just watch, I say that, and at level 20, Mike's going to be like, yeah, I'd like to tinker a nuclear weapon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can do that right now. <laughs> Sam's surprised he hasn't already asked. <laughs> I'm drawing up really, the plans. We haven't come across a depleted uranium yet. <laughs> uh, I was going to use uh, depleted magic crystals. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it comes down and you see a mushroom cloud, and then it doesn't get any bigger because it's made of ice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, mm, uh, H Hagrid, are, are you interested in, in trying to have uh, one of your weapons blessed, or would you like to uh, um, find an, another weapon and see if, see about getting that one blessed? Yeah, I'd, I'd rather try and find a different. One. Okay. Holy man, we'll be back. Very well. Be on your way and be blessed. That's Thank your you, Robert. You are. Sultan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that priest is so creepy. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's go find a weapon, Smith. All right, so as you guys head out, uh, heading towards the north uh, part of town, uh, the side of town that's closest to Lake Zarvich, uh, you find a blacksmith, uh, older gentleman, grizzled white hair, uh, looks shockingly similar to the uh, mining depot uh, salesman back in uh, Acre. But because he has all of his fingers, you are sure he's not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's my type of people. He's a craftsman. Yep. Why, hello there, Mr. Smithy. What have you got for sale? I've got coin if you've got wares. <laughs> <clears throat> well, feel free to look about them. Uh, it looks like he stands a little bit too close to the uh, heat source and it's really scorched his vocal cords. <laughs> All right, you guys heard him. Go find something of interest. Why, well, Hagrid, what kind of weapon are you looking for? Uh, some sort of sword would be nice. All right, Mr. Smithy, you got anything in the way of uh, hand crossbows and a great sword or something of that nature? Hand crossbows. Don't deal with that wooden shit. But I might have something for the big man here. As he pulls out a uh, what appears to be a silver inlaid greatsword. Um, he sits here and like, one of my finer works, if I do say so myself. Uh, Testing it out on a bunch of zombies. Even when I sit there and I miss hit, it still cleaves right through him. 
How much would that be? Well, considering it has only been slightly used, uh, let's call it 900. Haggard, are you looking for a great sword, or are you looking for something more of the uh, one-handed persuasion? If it has to be two hands, not with something that big. All right. So let's go ahead and give you a little poker then. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that, Dan. Uh, something that I can still have my shield would be much better for me, I think. Okay. All right. So. Something uh of a long sword, maybe. A long sword. Uh, you're not the barbarian type, are you? All right. Let me see what I've got. <laughs> uh, he walks back in into his house. He comes out and uh, shows. Flip into pages is the best part of this game. Really slows everything fucking down. No, 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 no. Kind of reminds me of uh, Fred from Big Hero 6. Uh, Who does? Uh, the merchant? The random singing. Oh. Oh. As he walks out with a trident of all things. <laughs> that sounds cool. <laughs> he sits there and goes, yeah, this thing's silver. Why stab one thing when you can stab three? Get these lined up with all the zombie heads and they'll drop at the same time. But even if you're a little bit off, you'll only drop one of the heads and the other two just happen to go in their face. Silver, just like the rest of them. Not my best work. We'll call this one 650. Trident. Does the trident have um, reach? The trident uh, has a thrown capability. Can be thrown twenty uh, feet, normal sixty feet with disadvantage, and is versatile. So if he decide, it's one d six damage with one hand, one d eight with two hands. Hmm. Hagrid, your thoughts? Uh, I'm not Poseidon. I'm not really feeling the trident. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you said that you wanted a longsword. Let's see what I've got. Um, at this point, he walks back in. He was a little dejected. He really wanted to sell that trident. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> as he comes back out, he goes... Down into he, something else. Yeah, he just looks... Another silver weapon... I ran out of silver on this one, so we had to make silver teeth instead, so I can use less material. Uh, but it's uh, if you're looking for a saw blade with a sword handle, this one's yours. 400 gold piece. How do you feel uh, about that one, Hagrid? Some ripping and tearing? Sort of uh, damage. Numbers are uh, we talking about? 1d8 slashing with one hand, 1d10 slashing if you use both hands. It has a versatile property to it. And it's okay. silvered? That sounds, uh, it is silvered. That sounds more along the lines of what I'm looking for. I, uh, I can't afford that. No. <laughs> is there some sort of a trade we can make? He's a smithy type. I got you, Hagrid. I got more than enough booty. How about 200 gold? 200 gold wasn't even enough to cover the cost of what little silver I had. How about 300 gold? Yeah, 375. 350. 380. <laughs> You're going the wrong direction. 350. <laughs> 400. He does not like you. You know, I'm trying to give him money, and he's just being greedy. Actually, you're trying to take money from him, basically. <laughs> because there's always a markup with these things. Uh, yeah, can I, like can I have money for food to cover the cost of the materials to make the weapons? 
can I try to make a persuasion check to persuade him to take it for 360 gold? Uh, how do you go about it and then roll? Uh, sir, I understand you're trying to, to make a living here, but uh, how, how does 360 gold, uh, gold hit you? All right, go ahead and roll. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that's a natural 20 and turns into a 30 with my modifier. <laughs> uh, he rolled a 14 that turned into a 16. <laughs> <laughs> he sits there and goes, Well, I understood that you let him do some of the talking because he's carrying the money. You should do more of the talking. Yeah, 360 works. Um, how about 361? 362. <laughs> Tony, just give him 362. <laughs> All right, 362 it is. <laughs> he takes it, he goes, you know, it is quite fun to mess with that guy. I haven't had fun in a very long time. Well, we're uh, we're striving to bring a little more of that to these parts. Uh, make sure he doesn't become more trouble than he's worth, though. I don't think everyone's got the same sense of humor I do. <laughs> I like you, Mister Smithy. You're a good guy, <clears throat> uh, sir. Do you have uh, do you have any any daggers by any chance? What kind of Smithy doesn't make daggers? Do you have any uh, really kick ass daggers? Oh, let's see what I got. He heads inside. He he pulls out three and goes, well, they're flimsy. Don't think they'll stand up to repeated uses because, once again, made from silver. But uh, I imagine you can throw these a few times and uh, really rip some shit up. Uh, what, uh, what's, what's the damage that we're talking about on these? Um, regular dagger damage, but they're silver and I threw one at a zombie head. When clean through. All right. Can, let, let me interrupt you there for a minute. Where are you finding all of these zombies? Are you making them? I have a, had a bad experience with the necromancer. <laughs> I can promise you, I did not start these zombies, but I certainly ended them. Everyone's got to have a hobby, right? Mind your zombie killing. Why are there so many zombies? <laughs> Why are there so many zombies? Why are there so many vampires? Why do you need so much silver? You're like my fucking wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who's right, going to buy silver weapons? This is just a waste of valuable silver. I think I sold uh, two of them today. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I think I think I'm going to actually pass on the daggers. Uh, but uh, but thank you for your time. Did anyone else want to look into anything? Hey, Mr. Smithy, is that squirrely, awkward, you know, wimpy-looking motherfucker on the other side of the street, a Fletcher? Sorry, trying not to chew with my mouth open. <laughs> you know we can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but in case you rolled a nat 20 in your uh, perception. <laughs> sits there goes like, yeah. Yeah, Fletcher of sorts. Handles all the bows and wooden stuff that, you know, I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. Go ahead and talk to him if you want. Hey, Does he practice on zombies, too? Your pansy app. What's up? Does he practice on zombies, too? No. Nah, no, nah, he's not as fun as I am. You guys should go zombie hunting together. I think you should probably have fun. What are you trying to do? Make everybody friends? I don't know. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. <clears throat> so uh, let's uh, visit, <laughs> visit. Let's visit the uh, the Fletcher, I guess. All right. All right. Uh, Fletcher comes in, kind of a spindly looking. Uh, emaciated human. Uh, looks like he th has two jobs. One is chicken farmer, the other is Fletcher. Does he fletch with chicken feathers? How much for the chickens? <laughs> <laughs> Part of me that the chickens aren't for sale for outsiders. I'm pretty sure you can get wolf steaks out of at the Blue Water Inn. Well, anybody who sells in this place is wolf steak. I want some actual food. <laughs> wolf steak is actual food 
Um, <clears throat> what uh, what sort of wares do you do you have to offer? <laughs> oh, I do mostly bow maintenance. Creates a few arrows here and there. Why? What do you need me to do? Uh, do you have any hand crossbows for sale? Hand crossbows. What are you, a little girl? Uh, well, there's a little a girl. Want, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is for a little girl. <laughs> well, fair play then. Uh, I don't have any on me right now, but I can craft one. Uh, let's take about 125 gold piece. How about half the money now? Half the money when I finish. Uh, wh- how, how long will it take? Uh, three, four days. How uh, how good of a craftsman are you? What kind of quality can we expect? 125 gold piece worth. What does that mean? Chicken mm. farmer quality, that's what I mean. <laughs> that means you pay good money, and you'll get a weapon deserving of good money. I think it'll be fine. Uh, Corey, roll insight. Uh, well, Tony, how are the coffers looking? Um, if I had to put a number to it, I'd say I'm at about 3,900%. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Older horses, I'm going to whisper stuff to you. Oh. Are they sweet nothings? Yes, sweet nothings. Okay. Um, You don't want the GM to know how much money you have? Nope. (laughs) I don't want the Fletcher fucker to know how much money I have. Uh, I don't. I don't think 120 for two hand crossbows is is really um, astronomical, and uh, I think that um, we can always uh, try to either get the money or or have Berlin pick up something else at another time. So uh, I I don't think that that's too bad. I'll give him the 120. Oh, I got it. I'm just saying that the coffers are are healthy. I just sure. don't like the flex fucker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tony, roll insight. <laughs> I'm going to use the black one. Uh, 14 plus, where did it go? 6, so 20. Uh, you're becoming increasingly frustrated. It seems like in this entire pocket dimension, nobody can just be straightforward and direct. <laughs> this cultural trait is stupid frustrating. I'm figuring out their culture. See? Makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, do you uh, do you have anything in the way of um, <clears throat> in enchanted arrows or bows or anything like that? Or do you really only do maintenance? I mean, I can craft the arrows. I can craft the bolts. The enchantments are really outside of my scope of expertise. I'm sure that... Uh, a priest down at St. Andrews can help you out with that part. Okay, we've officially come full circle. I guess it's about all we're going to be able to get out of this guy. What about any quality what? bowstrings? What kind of? Yeah, what kind of? What can you do with a bow that's already built? Well, what are you wondering? Why would I need well, your services? We're in the vampire killing business, and business is a booming, so we want to make it better. Well, if you guys can find some silver, I'm certain I can uh, make some silver arrowheads for you. You need to make friends with the guy across the street. He has a lot of it. (laughs) That prick always humming and hawing about something. Do you have any interest in shooting zombies in the head with a bow? Why would I want to be around zombies? Uh, (laughs) To to kill them. In the head with a bow? While they're conversing, I'd like to walk over to Mr. Smithy. You do so. (laughs) How much for an ingot of uh, silver, Mr. Smithy? 
Why do you want my silver? Because I'm going to give you gold for it. I can't argue with that. How much silver <laughs> you need? I just said I want one ingot. All right. Thousand gold. All right. I'll give you a thousand gold for an ingot. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> it's like, that seems exorbitant. <laughs> All right, how about this? You need a ingot. That's about a pound of silver. We'll say maybe 250 gold. All right, I'll do 250 gold. I need well, to go hit somebody in the head with that, but... <laughs> yeah, we'll do 250. 250, all right. He comes back, he goes you the silver, uh, and he just goes, Marge! Marge, I just sold the silver outright. Who's the fool now? <laughs> <laughs> So, as you're saying that, I want to walk back over and throw the silver ingot at the Fletcher's head so the smithy can see it. Uh, <laughs> roll for a range attack with disadvantage. <laughs> Don't add percept or, uh, proficiency. Um, they were both 15s. All right, so you hit, and uh, he suffers a concussion. Good. <laughs> There's Is your there silver, ass hat. Make me arrow tips. Why do I want to work for you now? <laughs> Ow! Go back up and do the cold before. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said, Mike. I said, I'll just go back to the dude who sold me silver to make me arrow tips, and we'll just stick them onto the arrows for uh, Leovin himself. I am a freaking tinkerer. I'm trying to support your economy, you little shit. Then why are you talking to me? <laughs> Ow. Okay, look, can you can you do the arrowheads or can you make the arrows or not? And how many can you make out of this ingot? Uh, uh, maybe 30? All right, how long will it take? Uh, longer now. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a I'll give you a 2-day rest period. How long will it take? Two and a half days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll we'll be back in a couple of days for the arrows. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's swing back by the church and see if we can get Hagrid's uh, silver-toothed longsword blessed. <laughs> Jesus fuck! What? Maybe some <laughs> arrows or something. All yeah, right. see, yeah, they can like bless the standard arrows you got or something. Yeah. Yeah, so they'll bless your standard arrows, and then we'll get your silver arrows blessed, so they're doubly dangerous. <laughs> sure. Okay. We're, right. we're really putting Jay through his paces here. <laughs> you guys make it back to St. Andrews. <laughs> the uh, priest sees you and goes like, "Ah, you guys are back so soon." Yep. Well, can I help you all with something? Uh, can you bless a couple of weapons for us? I certainly can. If you can present them, put them on the altar, and we'll see what happens. Do you know how long uh, you think it'll take to, to bless the weapons? If you put them all next to each other, maybe ten minutes. Okay. Hagrid, did you still want to uh, do a blessing on your longsword? Sure. <laughs> so I'll drop um, the arrows I have on me down. Okay. I'll put my ammunition up there. All right. And then, so we got the longsword, we've got the arrows, we've got the... Uh, 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 rounds. Bunch of ammo. Yeah. At this point, the uh, priest begins to sit there and go through his incantation. About two minutes in, he just opens his eyes and goes, well, "Something's not right." He looks under the altar and lifts up a yeah, uh, what appears to be a lash. He goes, "Oh, that explains what's not right." 
Um, I only have enough connection to enchant one item here. We're missing some of the components for the rest of the blessing. Um, is there one that is more important to bless than the others? I, would guess I, just, I just pick up my arrows and throw them back in my quiver. <laughs> Same thing with my ammo. Not saying a damn word is a shot. That makes the answer obvious. Uh, okay. As he begins to come back over and finishes the blessing on the sword, um, this will, for the net, uh, Dan, I'm going to have you roll a d100. Can I do that? How exactly? Uh, roll a d10 twice. Um, the first one is going to be your tens digit. The second one is going to be your ones digit. If they're both zeros, then it's a hundred. Nine and zero. So for the next ninety hours, your weapon uh, gets to act as if it is a plus two weapon, and mm -hmm. we'll do an additional one d6 radiant damage with every connected strike. <laughs> um, he sits there and goes, I'm very, very sorry that I could not do more, but uh, the connection that we had to the Morning Lord has been pilf. And it does put a uh, certain strain on my skill set. That's fine. You're still more useful than the Fletcher. <laughs> that may be so, but I have a diminished value to the efforts without the our, yeah, the holy focus. Um, all right, well, I guess I our, like our last... It's, uh... What were you going to say, Mike? Uh, I was just gonna say it, it looks like here we go killing again. I was gonna say it looks like the the last thing we need to do then is uh, pick pick up some horses from the stable and uh, probably set up for um, St. Markovius or um, yep. um, maybe correct. like s sleep. Yeah, and I'll just be here, holy man, with no holy connection. Well, we're coming. We're All coming right. back. Have, have fun with that. <laughs> yeah. We're working what? on fixing it. All right. Is there so. something we can do to help the priest? Well, I'm glad that you asked. <laughs> um, so obviously, this is Saint Andrew's Church, and in our culture, when we build a church, we bury the remains of the person who changed was after church was named after, underneath the altar. Someone has taken his remains. If you track down what happened to him and were able to return said remains, I should be able to increase my utility towards the effort. Um, all right, then can we take a look at your your hatch there and see if we can glean any information as to where the remains may have gone? Certainly may. Uh, whoever is going to do that, uh, roll an investigation check. Seven. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> as you begin to investigate, you sit there and say, hmm. This is a hole. Uh, I got a 12. <laughs> hmm. This is a hole that was dug out a long time ago. <laughs> no. Uh, All right. Let me see what I can get. No, don't stop rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I was clearly making a joke. Uh, nope. I'm doing it again. Fuck you. Uh, as, uh, the elven components of the party begin to look uh, through their... Uh, as the ranger, you notice that this uh, was originally a very rectangular shaped coffin, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, but there was some 
freshly shoveled uh, earth that appeared to look to try to retrieve the remains. Uh, the rogue uh, sits there and sees that uh, it was sort of a handprint that you would equate to someone uh, who, who has been fully grown. It uh, doesn't look like it was a halfling in nature or even a dwarf. It looks like it is a, a full, medium-sized humanoid. Uh, based off of the handprint, you know for a fact that Hagrid didn't take the remains. Um, I asked the, the priest, uh, do you know of anyone who would have wanted to take these remains or anyone who may want to, to have taken them to try their own blessings of sort? I'm sure that there are a number of individuals who feel like we aren't currently doing enough in the efforts against the vampires. I would imagine that the list being five or six names long, but which one specifically, I couldn't tell you. <clears throat> uh, guys, I think we should ask the, uh, the, the orphan. Jay said he was like 19, 20 years old. Yep. And he's obviously, uh, you said that he's distraught over the lack of things that he can do to rid the world from evil, right? Dist distraught's not really the best word. Uh, frustrated to the nth level would be better. Okay. I think he may have motive. <laughs> uh, actually, at this point, because I have to get moving, uh, I'm going to uh, hit pause in the game right here. When we get back, we will continue to look on who stole the bones of St. Kendrell. Um, Corey, if you want to take this time to talk to everybody about what is uh, coming ahead for uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen, let them know a little bit about the world so that if they needed to fine-tune some stuff with their characters, they can. Uh, starting next week, uh, you guys will be in that campaign. Um. Well, uh, Dad, Scott, how f how far along are you guys in uh, in your characters? Um, most of the way there in a general sense. Um, I'm as far as all of the like. So you said we're just using the same numbers, but switching them around. Yeah, you're just rearranging your ability scores as you do to optimize it for that class. Okay, so we're not, like, playing around with much else in there. Right, yeah. Okay. So then, you know, your your skills are going to change, and because you're a new class, you're you're able to choose a new background, and yeah. uh, you'll have new proficiencies. But yeah. <clears throat> as far as the base numbers go... Okay. Yeah, you'll be you'll use the ones that you have for Lay of the Ranger. We're still gonna pick different proficiencies, mm -hmm. or can anyway. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because I was like trying to go um, use the like orc pub thing, mm -hmm. and I felt like it was making it um, difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would probably just uh, <clears throat> look uh, look through the player's handbook and then yeah. do, do the sheet on your on your own. Okay. And then if you have any questions on like where certain numbers come from, I can answer those for you. Um, okay. As far as like kind of what to expect from the tyranny of dragons, um, uh, we're going to be uh, in the Sword Coast region of the world. Um, and without really spoiling too much, uh, you guys uh, will be fighting mostly uh, like human and kobold characters, which are like um, like sort of like lizard people. <laughs> okay. Um, so as far as like character optim optimization goes, uh, uh, like. Uh, dad for your paladin you don't have to worry too much about like a focus on undead so uh, you know obviously i know some of your abilities affect undead but it, you don't have to select spells specifically for the undead right i kind of figured that okay 
Um, but yeah, other than that, it's it's going to be you know a, a very uh, similar format um, <laughs> as far as how we're running things go. Um, we try to have uh, more maps and ambient noises and stuff like that. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, make sure. Um, uh, so I guess it's just a slider. So if you click that uh, that gear icon, um, that's in the chat page. So Dad, I guess you'd have to pop that out. Um, there's a slider for master music volume level. Master music volume. Master music. What is happening? I don't know. Did we just get Truman showed? Something happened. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not not sure what 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 uh, what else to say about it. All right. Yep. So just make sure that uh, over the next couple of days you get your characters squared away. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, just know once Mike loads up those things on YouTube, I will be listening. <laughs> Uh, out in Italy and Spain, and uh, looking forward to uh, jumping back in with you guys. Um, like I said to Scott beforehand, if there's a weekend where I know that I have an entire day off, uh, we'll return to Curse of Strahd. We're not going to put it down entirely, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just making sure that the game continues even if I'm not around. Okay. Yep. So our done for the evening then because everything started breaking up on my end uh yes yeah we will uh have to uh hit pause on the game right now because i got somewhere to be in uh 15 minutes mm. yeah, okay. but, uh, i'll be back in a couple hours all right well i will conclude what i have for the stream then